What's going on everybody, it's Tom And it's Jamie Welcome to the Chronicles of Podcast The Chronicles of 2000 Trees 2024 My name's Ollie, I play guitar in Negative Frame My name's Luke and I play drums in Negative Frame I see your face in every day An absolute pleasure to have you here guys, thank you for joining us today Oh yeah um, First things first, how's your personal Friday treating you? Wow, so we played yesterday on the cave stage yeah. with Overpower and Grove Street. We had such a great time, man. So sick to be here. Like, we're stoked. It's a good vibe. Oh, it's, it's such a, very a good, good vibe. vibe. The sun was out. Like, it's awesome. Yeah, it was unreal. As we were not expecting the sun yesterday. That was absolutely insane. Yeah. I was like, so where good. the fuck's that come from? Yeah. Oh, Being yeah. Scottish, I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah. But the Overpower boys said a lot of nice things about you. We had them earlier. Um, so, yeah, they uh, beat you up, up massively. They're legends. Um, so. Such nice guys. Same with Grocery. They're all such nice guys. You know? Like when we always when we like play shows together, it's such. It feels like such a mates like show or mates fest. And yeah. It's it's always just such a good vibe with them. Like yeah. and all of like those kind of. So like, many UK bands. hardcore bands on this on this fest. Cauldron, Cruelty. Let's fucking go. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out. Yeah, I think that's the best thing about this festival. It's got quite a family feel to it, but it's such a mixture and an array of bands that are playing, so you can like go and find a bit of everything. Well, that's really cool, you know. I really prefer like lineups where there's a mix of like different genres, you know. Yeah. And I think like hardcore all dayers are really sick, and but also I think you know to draw in numbers, like just doing a mix of like genres, it yeah. really just like brings up the numbers but also it gives like kids that don't listen to hardcore that come to the fest for whatever other genre and go oh shit I'll just check this out yeah and then boom you're listening like fucking turnstile or some shit or whatever do you know what I mean yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> that's how it grows like that's how that's how the scene yeah grows. it's incredible so I mean so you said you played yesterday how was it very sick Amazing. yeah I think that's yeah, got to be right. the most people we've played to oh, yeah. so it's a surreal feeling yeah. and playing outside like in an open air sort of like thing was very we very sick really solid, like having uh, just a lot of space you know we had a lot of space on the stage the sound was amazing and we felt like really solid being up there like doing what we do you know because we bring a fun vibe to the hardness that we provide so it's like yeah we're fun but like we bring those heavy parts and like people are, like spin kicking at this like, oh, rock fest. No, no, so no. sick. Like to see, like it's amazing. So that might be the greatest tagline for a band ever, by the way. Fun times to the hardness we bring. That is fucking yeah. great. Oh, that no. needs to go on a t-shirt. <laughs> My favorite way that someone described us was you're like Motley Crue, but with beat down. I was just like <laughs> And this guy was like 40, so clearly he like was a like a you know, like rock kind of like era, like listener, music fan. But yeah, Motley Crue with Beatdown. I heard that and was like, sick. Yeah, yeah. I've done, I've, I've done my job, like, let's go. As a drummer in a band that's described like Motley Crue, don't get your dick out on social media. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I can confirm that will not happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but compared to a negative frame show, for festivals, do you change the set this up accordingly? So it's like, let's just drop all the bangers if people aren't so familiar with us? So we have uh, two EPs out at the moment, our latest releases. Both have like an intro. So we use two intros, we break up the set with like an in another intro in the middle. But really, man, like, we have a set list that we've like just been constructing over a while. Like, yeah, just like, I mean, we like to like change transitions. It but mainly it's kind of like the same sort of songs. I mean, same same songs. Like, I mean, we're kind of like writing at the moment. We should. We're dropping a single quite soon. We've like recorded it. Uh, we just need to sort of music video at the moment. We've got like a whole like plan of like what we're doing. Yeah. Right, so. so we just announced a headline tour with Rust from Canada. That's for October in the UK. Stoked for it. We're gonna have our new song Bad Blood drop just before. And then it's time for our first album. Which is a huge deal for us. We're Incredible. excited for that. So the aim is to record in like November, like late this year, and just yeah. right now it's like writing season. So it's yeah, it's yeah, it's it's creative writing. Hours, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just gotta see what we can write. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so as a as a podcast, we're ambassadors for the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. Yes. Are you familiar with the foundation, Sophie's story at all? I've known about it for a while, but uh, coming to light with. Uh, more information about it is uh, yeah. it's, it's heartbreaking it is it's a really moving thing because it's like a lot of people get into this sort of music to express themselves and feel like they can be 
be themselves in like a safe environment. So it's it's heartbreaking, man. Like, and this sort of music is such community, and it's one of my favourite things about hardcore yes. and metal. And yeah, man, it's devastating. Like, it's but, amazing though we can come to a fest like this, and uh, you know everyone's free, feeling so free and safe. just like absolutely very safe, absolutely. and it's like just like having a great time with people who are into music. You know, we're just here for a good time and like it's exactly that. Everyone's to here just together. to listen to good music, like yeah, man. But is this something you guys have ever experienced being treated differently, having stereotypes put against you because the music well. you listen to, the way you dress, whatever it may be? I mean, like me and Luke both grew up like in the fucking scene days when we were kids. I'd come to school like with a fucking scene fringe and all that, but I got away with it because I would fuck about a lot and make everyone laugh and like fuck around. So uh, I got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, man, yeah, you know, be be yourself. You know, just do what you do, Absolutely. and you know. It's, Absolutely. It's the, but it's the do you one. think it, like looking back, so what happened to Sophie was two thousand and seven, and looking back from when you guys were kids. Do you think it's got better, a bit easier for the alternative yeah. community now in 2024? I totally think so. That's really interesting because, I mean, you know, we're not kids anymore, like, no. having all these, like, school little fussy shit, like, you know. We're grown up now, but I feel like the alternative community is, like, really bright at the moment, you know, and hardcore is just, like, on fire. And like everyone knows about it, it's like what the fuck? Knock, knock loose, malevolence, just like guilt trip, just like bringing it, bringing hardcore to like the metal scene, yeah. and it's fucking sick. Yeah, man, it's unreal. Absolutely. Before we let you guys get out of here, can we talk about download? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, sure. Yeah, download. <laughs> it's a big deal for us. It was you know? like fair, fair fucking play to you guys. No, Absolutely. I tip you, my tip my hat to you guys. It, it was a very big decision and yeah. I think that hearing the response that we got when we announced the, that we like decided to pull out it, um, it was such a like rewarding thing to know how many people it affected and you know most importantly pushing the cause itself to raise awareness and, and to boycott Bar- and Barclays worked. from download and it did yeah, yeah it did it work worked. and yeah. like there was quite how many bands was there like five or six yeah, or five, five or yeah. six yeah like pest control us overpower uh, speed, Scowl, Zulu. Uh, I think that's the. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was Monday, right before the fest. We were heading off on Wednesday. And you know, it had build, been building up like that weekend. Like we were talking about it. And uh, we had to do it, man. You yeah. know, we had to do it. Yeah. We had just done a headline show for Palestine. And uh, did a whole day we had, fest. Like, a whole day fest and raised like us and like other bands raised three thousand pounds. Wow, nice. Which, yeah. which was a fantastic cause, and I always love playing shows yeah. like that because you know it's going somewhere. It was that weekend. It came to light how big a deal Barclays are. Like everyone going to this fest, every card transaction is like funding this bullshit and like yeah. funding a terrible thing. We can't be a part of that, you know. We had to. We had to do. Even though we're a small band on this big bill, like, like everyone makes a difference. Everyone right? makes a difference, and thankfully, like we played a small part in Barclays being cut from this year, you know. Yeah. But, uh, and I, f- I think it opened a lot of eyes as well, because I'll be honest, I had no idea that Barclays were involved in all that stuff. So that opened yeah. my eyes too. I was like, oh, okay. I did not know. It's it like this. billions. When, when, when pounds. Like, Pest Control announced that they were like, they are. Uh, Left the lineup. I was just like, I was like, what? What? Like, you know, I was kind of in the dark about it. You know, it wasn't really. Well, I didn't really hear about it until like that happened, and then we kind of got talking, and then we just had to make the decision. And then, yeah. And then all of a sudden, like on my like social media, everyone's like posting it and sharing it on like their stories and shit. And it's yeah, it just caught me off it, guard. So yeah. I'm just glad, glad to be done. Even though it was very last minute, and you know, it's hard. It was like, really hard for people, us to pull out of like a huge fest. Like people but, were expecting to see us as well. Yeah. I mean, I grant you, it probably wouldn't have been as much as like under like speed or something. But you know, even still, like that was hard. But it was definitely the right decision. Absolutely, like, no doubt. Fair play to you guys for standing, standing by oh, it. Yeah. Respect the hell out of it. Thank you, gents. Thank you so much. It means the absolute world. Awesome. Takes time. Yes. Chat with us today. I had a great really time. Fun. Thank nice you very much, guys. guys. Nice Thank you. Oh, oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Cheers. So much fun. Awesome. Thank you. Hello. 
This is Marshall from Teenage Wrist. This is Anthony from Teenage Wrist. It's an absolute pleasure talking both here. Thank you so much, especially so late on a Saturday after uh, evening. Is that Saturday? What what day it is, is it? Sa- it's definitely Saturday today. All right, cool. It, it, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because obviously festivals only run until Sunday, and so we with, with this one obviously we were on a day earlier, so people were keep going. It's not Saturday, it's Sunday. It's definitely Saturday today. It feels like a Sunday. Does it feel like a Sunday? It feels like a Sunday. It's a little sleepy. You know? it, it feels like yeah. a Sunday, and also we, we I, I keep remembering that we're playing London tomorrow, which is a Sunday, and that's the only reason why I remember it's Sunday is because okay. it's, <laughs> it's because of, when, when's that show? And, like, yeah, yeah. You know, and we've been on tour for two weeks already, and it's already like time's blurring, you know? Yeah, well, especially when you're here in the UK as well, so the time difference is massive compared to the States and stuff, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't even try to keep track of what no time point. is in the US anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we're fuck we're it. going to like, Japan after this, so it's, it's even going to be more. Fun. Oh, dude. <laughs> Sleep That's... means nothing. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not afraid of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope you don't lose a day somewhere. Do you know what I mean? It'd be like the fucking 16th of July, and all of a sudden it's the 18th. Like, hang on a minute. What happened there? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's going to happen. I think, uh, actually, I'm going to... For the first time in my life, gain a day at the end of this tour because we're stop, we're ending in Australia, and then we travel home, and we leave Saturday night, and we get back Saturday night. No so, way! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's fucking wild. That's insane, man. I, is that like time travel? Yes. That's time travel, isn't it? That's literal time travel right there. It's it's absolutely time travel. Have Tina yeah, Drissus yeah. invented time travel? Well, jet lag naps are also time traveling for the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like when we when we fall asleep in, when we fall asleep in the van, every single one of us has been like, okay, like, we, like today he was even like, I, I went to another dimension straight up. I, like, <laughs> I had an out of body experience today. I woke up, it, it sh- you know, kind of shook it off in the van, and I was like, oh, this is this is where I am. I'm here. Oh, yeah. I'm here now. Okay, I guess I guess I'm still on tour in the UK. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. You were buttering toast a minute ago. What's uh? Why are you over there driving now? Yeah, what's going on? Weird. Anyway, I think I was having a bath. Yeah, but that's no, that, that is exactly how I feel right now, like butter and toast. Ah. <laughs> phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. But how was the set? You're, you're gonna have to take this one. <laughs> No, the the set the set was cool because like you know like I mean we're you know it's it's I'm not even going to the whole thing like oh we're exhausted whatever it's like it really is so cool to do these things yeah um, and you know slapping in festivals in the middle of touring is always really interesting because like you're a well-oiled machine enough so where you can like you know put the show on and 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 slam it whatever but like it's so funny like you know we're coming out of traveling and you, and we just we only came out of Calais this morning and then and then we're in England and then we're playing a show for you know however many people and we're like holy yeah. shit but the tent was full and that was awesome there's a, a guy in a banana costume getting down and and you know and they, and they and they sat through all of our you know technical difficulties which were very silly things but it's like but that's also performing you know so it's it, i think festivals always are the weird pin in yeah. touring where yeah, like they, yeah. they become memorable because they're so th- like not thrown together but like they really are it's like throw and go so so the sh- the show was good uh, we made it. Good. <laughs> we, we played. We played not any later, and I think how we played any later, all of us would have been like, "Fuck off." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think festivals are the type of show where I somehow simultaneously have the most fun, but also want to kill myself the most while I'm doing it. Oh, dude. You know. Like and now you're sat here doing press as well. <laughs> like, no, just, this is the fun part. Now. Oh, okay, now we good. Just, <laughs> we just get to bullshit now. Yeah. You know, on stage, it's like I have to be fucking, I have to try to be serious. And today, I just that just completely broke. Yeah. Yeah, we, just, we just did a, uh, like, nope. <laughs> we just did a bit, we just did a bit of press, and they were saying, what's your favorite fictional character? I said, Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> For the record. I feel like a fictional character right now. Yeah. Are you going to to another dimension again? Yep. Butter, yeah, yeah. Butter and Breadman. Yeah. <laughs> but for a teenager show compared to a festival show, so you talk about how it's like the pin and touring and whatnot, do you change the set this up accordingly? So, because like, obviously people are not really so familiar with yourselves, so you do change up the songs, or is it like, fuck it, this is what we're going with? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, we change it up sometimes. If uh, we feel like a song is uh, it's too deep of a cut or if it's not hitting, you know, we'll swap it out for something else. And uh, for something like Japan, which we have coming up. Uh, it's, you know, we're, we're going to try to 
throwing as much from all the records as much as we can. Whereas, you know, maybe if we're touring in the States or something, it's, uh, we, we try to throw in as much new yeah, material yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as possible. So yeah, it, it just, it all depends. So us as a podcast, we're ambassadors for the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. Are you aware of Sophie and the story and the foundation at all? No. no. Well, as you said, you don't want to talk about serious things. I'm really sorry. Um, <laughs> basically, the story of Sophie is her and her boyfriend were walking through a park on the way home after a night out, and they were attacked to the point where Sophie lost her life. Oh um, her boyfriend fortunately survived, but has not been the same since because of the trauma is left behind. And this all happened because they were goths. They did not know these people. They'd never seen them before. They were literally just walking for a park, and these guys did not like the way they looked. And it's horrendous. It's the most horrific story. And we're talking to people here because we're one big alternative family here at 2000 Trees. To basically find out if something you guys have had to experience in your lives, being part of this community, being treated differently, have stereotypes thrown upon you, simply because the music you listen to, the way you dress, whatever it may be, is that something you've had to experience in your lives? Well, to a, to a lesser extent, I think. I mean, obviously, I mean, not obviously. I guess people don't know where I come from. I, I've never been jumped in the street or anything like that thank god but uh yeah i mean sure people people find a like really the the dumbest reasons especially you know young people or you know people that are just full of boredom and hate and you know just outward uh anger you know that that's that's really i think it ha- has more to do with themselves yes yeah uh, yeah, people find really dumb reasons to hurt one another, They're, and uh, yeah, yeah th- I, I've definitely experienced a little bit of that just because I was, uh, you know, I wore <laughs> I, I wore questionably tight pants in high school, or <laughs> dyed my hair a stupid color, or you know, had tattoos or whatever. Uh, it, luckily, not so much in in my uh, adult years, I guess. Yeah. But uh, I, don't know, I think it, with with kids, it's the worst. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, it's it's especially like sad because like we don't we don't and I'm not I'm not trying to say it's any like level of, of, of privilege or anything but like I, we don't we don't experience things like that to the degree that like transgender people get bullied for things or people come no. to these festivals and they don't feel safe and like and, and we're trying and like I feel like a lot of bands right now are really I, I hope trying to really ex, like expand and be more inviting than ever and and that's really beautiful to see and it's like really infuriating to hear personally because like. Like the the fact that people get bullied for that shit. Like I got picked on in school, but it wasn't for a scene that I belong to. It was. It's just like so. Like to me, it's like, you know, it's it's just really like upsetting, truthfully. And and I hope that like people really understand. Like um, you know, again, like to, I'm trying to think of a better word, but like the plight of people who are trying to be themselves and and, and feeling themselves and, and and want to dress the way they do and and live the way they do and and identify. Like you know, I, I hope festivals like this make it a safe place for that and I hope things like this encourage people to create safe spaces for those people because like it's for anyone to be doing that is like it's like it's 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 not human it's inhumane it's animalistic it's bullshit so like you know I I, I hope that everyone gets to come together a little bit deeper from things like this so absolutely absolutely but what happened to Sophie was back in 2007 and when we were growing up compared to now 2024 the world's a very different place do you think that maybe now it's a little bit easier, a little bit safer to be part of this family, the alternative community, or still work to be done? Wow, uh, <laughs> what, <laughs> what? It's it's really really difficult to say. Yeah. Uh, often, uh, I feel like we're as a as a band at least, and as people, we're a bit more on the outskirts of. Yeah you know the alternative scene especially because i mean we're a little bit older right like i'm 37 how 32. old are you 32 yeah so we're not like you know as as deeply embedded in the culture yeah i think as as maybe you know some some people think that we are <laughs> uh, we just happen to make music i think and it attracts certain people but yeah i mean obviously there's 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 still work to be done i think uh no matter what time period it is or uh, what the reason it is, uh, um, people are always going to find some reason to be hateful towards one another. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And it's, I hate the fact that you're absolutely right. No offense. Because, but you're right. Like, 
people just always seem to find something. I don't know what it is. Just let people live their life. I couldn't give a shit what you're wearing or what music you're listening to. Just crack on, as long as you're happy. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. As, long, <laughs> as long as you're not infringing on the rights of someone else, you know, it's it's like do do what you will. Yeah. Absolutely. So you guys briefly mentioned it, but you are going on tour. You're finishing up here, going to Asia, and then going to Australia. Who planned this tour, and why do they hate you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we have our, our agent at ATC, Graham Clues, to thank for that. Uh, but it was it's really our own doing because the, the offers kept coming and we kept saying yes. <laughs> God, so we up. hate ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which goes back to what you were saying earlier. <laughs> I want to punch Anthony in the face and it's because I'm mad at myself. <laughs> it's projecting physically. <laughs> Incredible. Obviously, you guys released your EP, Live and Made of Ale, back, um, when was that? back in May. Is there more music on the way, or is it just tour, 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 and we'll worry about that when we get back? Uh, the second thing, yes. The second thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there, there's, there's more music, there's always more music, but uh, we haven't really even scratched the surface of what we're going to be doing yet, I don't think. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's, you know, it's... We're trying to make sure that what we're doing is authentic and we're not making records for the sake of. And when you do that, there's a lot of space because you're, cause you're trying to make something that's true to where we're at. So so we'll see. Um, in the meantime, you know, we, we get to come back in December with uh, Enter Shikari. And, and, um, and then there's a lot to look forward to in, in, in the middle and maybe try to get some shows back home. We'll see, you know. Incredible. Gents, thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, look, I'm trying again in English. Thank you so much for taking the time out to sit with us today. It really means the absolute thank world. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm Perry. I play bass. I'm Fraser. I sing. Lovely. It's an absolute pleasure to have you both on here. Thank you so much. You so I spoke much. to someone yesterday. I can't remember who it was who said you were fucking amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was like, it was so cold and it was unreal. It's like, uh, and then he mentioned something about you had no merch here and he was gutted about it. Yeah. Uh, we're we're, we're kind of infamously terrible. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're not great. Yeah, we're not great. Just one of those things. That's fine. Yeah, I, we, I genuinely for life become who it was, so I do apologize, but. Uh, we, um, the, 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 the guy that's helping us with our interview is Jacko. Um, he used to put on one of my old bands. Like when I was younger. Oh, okay. And like my old band, we like turned up to a show. We'd we'd hand printed thirteen t-shirts, and <laughs> on, st on stage I was like, "We've got thirteen t-shirts for sale," and like someone in the crowd was like, 13 t-shirts," <laughs> and just like crying about it. <laughs> and like, <laughs> like infamously, we've always been terrible at printing merch. Like that's just something that stuck with me all this time. Like I've always just that's it now. been down bad yeah. with merch. <laughs> I love that. How was your personal Saturday, by the way? It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is, I've had worse Saturdays. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just chilling, like yeah, hanging out. We just have bangers and mash. Yeah, bangers and mash. For dinner. You actually? Oh, you yeah, bastards. bangers and mash for dinner. So this time we've had bangers and mash catering, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we needed. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm jealous. We haven't eaten yet. We've been fucking sat here. We need to get on that bangers of man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Bangers Just of man. all the bangers of man. <laughs> I mean, everyone's been banging about for tomorrow because obviously it's the Euros final tomorrow. So, yeah. so anyone have the most English food ever tomorrow? Yeah. Like, that's yeah. it. That's it. We also saw Frank Skinner earlier. Like that. that yeah, he's here. Yeah. Like English we're so, than that. We're someone talking to Creeper. Like, what the fuck is going on there? <laughs> yeah. 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 Very yeah, I was like, dude, my dad loves you. I need a picture. Phenomenal. <laughs> Absolutely. Phenomenal. What a legend. Yeah, I know. Um. How was the set? Crazy. Yeah. Really, we, really good. We didn't know what to expect because we've not done anything really like this before. Like, we're kind of the, the like, small club show sort of band. Like, we're not really yeah, yeah. made, like, festivals, especially ones that aren't, like, a hardcore festival. Like, we just did Epa, which is more our, like, classic bag. Yeah. Um, so this was, like, daunting, but it was insane. Yeah. Like, definitely up there with best shows we've done um, just feel like we brought it like I don't know all of us were just like on fire on stage I think just like moving around a bunch um, which is like yeah I think we're all just excited and we all came off the stage happy which is like never happens yeah. usually we nice. have a few people there that are like terrible usually him yeah <laughs> why is that I don't know I just like if, 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 if something goes wrong I'm just like yeah this was the worst show ever it could have been the most insane set and it probably was the most insane set but like if I just like buff one note I'm like yeah it's awful 
Hard to please. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, it's, I suppose it's good because you give a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. Even though if you played one note wrong or whatever, and you said, it's not the worst show ever, is it? It's just, no. it just no. shit happens It's just sometimes. in my head, I'm like, oh my god, who heard that? Everybody heard that. But we're all our own worst critics. Yeah. We're all always our own worst critics. Absolutely. So, um, so you mentioned that you played uh, at a festival before, but like for a cauldron show, say, compared to a festival set, do you change your set list up accordingly? Like, because obviously people might not be familiar with yourselves, so you might play just more bangers? We, honestly, the way that we approach it is really like, well, we played probably the heaviest set we've ever done at this show, and then like, we just kind of play what we want to play, and like, we don't really think too much about what will go over. Like, I guess most people probably think that we do in 2000 Trees, which is like a mixed festival, we're probably going to play our like more, like our songs with choruses in. But yeah. we didn't play any of them, we just played like the ones with beat downs and like <laughs> it worked. Um, which is weird because sometimes we'll play a hardcore show and we'll hit them with the the sing along like and it just bombs like <laughs> just, just just like to be unex Oh my god, I forgot the word I'm after. Ignore that, I've forgotten the word I'm after. <laughs> unpredictable! I got there! Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, there eventually. Yeah, yeah. Just like to be unpredictable, yeah, we innit? do like to be unpredictable. <laughs> I think it's more We're so a very <laughs> unpredictable band. I think it's more so we have no foresight. No. Absolutely none that. at all. We just don't want to play that song. Yeah. It could be like the song that everyone wants to see, and we're just like, ah. So, as a podcast, we're ambassadors for the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. Are you familiar with Sophie and the story? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, what we're trying to do as we're here at one big alternative family of 2000 Trees is basically find out if you guys have ever been treated differently, had stereotypes put up on you simply because the music you listen to, the way you dress. Whatever it may be, that what makes you part of this community is this something you've had to endure in your life? Yeah, I think I speak for everyone in the band. Yeah. We've all dealt with that kind of thing, especially in like school. Like teenagers suck, man, and kids suck. Yeah. Like <laughs> they are really awful to each other sometimes. And I think like going through secondary school, it was like a common thing to just be like called a rocker or like a goth or something. It's like all you do is listen to the music that you're like listening to. Especially like most of us like grew up around that kind of music as well. Yeah. So it's just the background that we come from kind of thing. So yeah. yeah. I remember just like being younger walking through like some of the rougher areas of just like where we're like from and just like people throwing sticks at me and my mates just for like wearing what? merch. Just being like, Oi emo. <laughs> yeah, that was a big one. Emo, that was a huge one. Yeah. Or oi me- oi Mosha. Yeah. That was a big one. Um but like also like them people are like I see them sometimes and they're just the most miserable people on earth like nothing's happened in their lives like there's no there's no like alternative interest that they have it's just do the same monotonous things that their parents did and there's no there's no like straying from that path like um, so like yeah we had to go through that shit but at the same time thankful for it definitely yeah Especially because it's led us, like, because we had those alternative interests and because we were kind of, like, different at school or whatever, it's kind of led us to find this, like, niche group of people that all have the same interest. So that's definitely what led, like, people like me and Zach and, like, probably you as well, like, to the hardcore scene where you meet people that are, like, our best friends now. Like, I don't speak to anyone that I went to school with bar Zach, who plays drums in the band. All my other friends are hardcore kids, like, and I wouldn't have found that scene had I not been accepted at school, like, so. I think it's the one thing we've learned this weekend from so many people saying it is, kids are dicks. Like, Honestly, <laughs> they're awful. They are awful. <laughs> In secondary school, all the kids are awful. Yeah. And it's, it's important, like you are saying there, you don't speak to many of them people anymore. They don't matter. But when you're going through it at that time, it's like, this is all that matters. I'm having this shit put up on me every single day. Yeah. But I think it is important to realise that, yeah, you grow past it. You don't have to deal with these people. Yeah, but for sure. Obviously, when we were growing up and then what happened with Sophie, 2024 is a very different world to that then. Yeah. Do you think it's easier now for people to grow up in this community and just feel safe, or is it still a lot of work to be done? I think it's hard to say because we're not... It's hard to say because we're not going through it, but like from the outside looking in, I feel like those lines of like subculture are starting to blur more where, because of how easy it is now to access like whatever you mu- music you want, whenever you want it. Like there isn't as much need for you to go and seek out a subculture. So like 
when we were young, you'd go on like LimeWire and like oh. download, like yeah, just music. type in metalcore and just download everything, right? And you had to search that out, download a thing. Whereas now, like you can find anything you want in seconds. Yeah. So why would you need to like make your whole life be based around a subculture, which is a shame in some regards, but also I think it, it kind of maybe makes people somewhat more tolerant because they can see all these things and like yeah they're not as shocked by things anymore because that's really what it is is that people are shocked by somebody looking different to them and so they act aggressively because of it so now that like bring me the horizon for example are one of the biggest bands in the world and are like playing on the radio like someone's not going to be as shocked by hearing like seeing a bring me the horizon fan now as they would be when we were in school maybe but that's just like like I said, I'm not in school, so I don't know. I think, I think that's the tough part of it, isn't it? Like, we can all look at it from the outside in. Unless you're there in schools nowadays, it's so hard to tell. But like you said, everything's so much more accessible. The lines are blurring. So I'd like to hope it's getting easier. Yeah. Yeah, and it really just depends, like, like if... If we have, like, dickheads in Parliament, Parliament that are going to say stupid things, like, that make it harder for like trans people to well, live yeah. and like that's happening currently like I dread to think about what that would be like being in school now um, after some of the shit that Sunak said and like that's like the concerning part I, I, I guess I don't really follow as much what happens with like alternative people but yeah it's a difficult one it is it's a very different world yeah but Bringing it back to yourselves, you released your album Suicide in the City back in November now. Yeah. Can the fans expect more music from you soon or are we still riding high on that album? Yeah, we've got a new single coming out at the end of next month. Um, just a single, standalone, just like three minutes, heavy, just like, Very heavy. you're not going to get the lyrics tattooed, but like, yeah. <laughs> no, no. you're going to like the song probably, yeah. like, um, and yeah, that's like, <laughs> that's all we want, so. Incredible. Guys, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much yeah, for taking yeah, time to chat with us. Thank, thank you, you, so, much. Thank you so much. I'm Jess, I play guitar. Hi, I'm Alison, I play bass. And I'm Ben, I play drums. Oh, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on here. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. So thank you so much. How are your personal Saturdays treating you? Having a good day? <laughs> Long, but that's because we come from Blackpool uh, and Alison drove. We, we couldn't stop for like services, nothing, because we, we were going to be late. I mean, it's pretty oh, far. Oh, shit. Yeah, we're still late. Yeah. Over, over four hours, just no stop to be on time. No yeah. way! Oh, you know, but he, I don't know how he does it. He's a superhero it's because right. yeah. he's he's a, he's a tour manager, the, the the technician, the DIY god of building shit that is amazing. Just watching that ego grow. Like <laughs> no, impossible. So are you excited to play later? Yeah, very. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. I mean. Neither of us have actually experienced a silent disco before, so it's think, kind of an yeah. interesting concept because it's like, well, how does it work? If they have the headphones off, should it still they'd hear you singing? Yeah, but that's it. But that's it. But yeah, nothing else. It'd be like acapella and just, and just like. <laughs> no, my worst. Yeah, drum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> rubber, rubber noises like tapping. Noises. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of work. How it's going to work? You, no, but you can explain like. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it, it makes sense. It's just like it's gonna be a different vibe for the audience, I guess. For us, it's the same because that's how we rehearse at home. So for us, it's gonna be like a home practice essentially. Oh, okay. Because we because you know we can't afford to like rent a studio. We had to practice at home silently. So Ben's using an electronic drum kit, and we have like you know. In it is. So yeah, yeah. Silent disco every day. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially, you should fucking nail this. Uh, right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, let's, let, uh, yeah, no, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, no, I, I think so. I think it's just going to be a bit more intimate, maybe, because there's not going to be, it's going to be like going to the cinema, you know, everything is dark, surround system kind of vibe. There's nothing, you know, um, like no, nobody, you know, people are just going to listen to the music. Yeah, yeah. Like immersive. Yeah, that's, that's what I... Good 
Yeah, it's great words. Yeah, immersive experience. Yeah. I, I wish I could that. actually be in the audience, to be honest. <laughs> just, to, just to see yeah. what it's like. Just jump off the stage mid song. Oh, yeah. oh. pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea, wouldn't it? But I know it's a San Disco set, but compared to a cavalry show, for festivals, do you change the set up accordingly? So, like, do you most put, because uh, people might be so familiar with yourself, say, do you put more bangers in to draw more people in? I mean, I think we've just got like a shorter set that we do for festivals, but okay. it depends on the audience. Like, if we play, like in the states, for example, maybe we'll we'll favor like Spanish songs, you know, because Jess wrote songs in Spanish as well. So because there's a more Latin American community, and you know, yeah. but essentially we, yeah, we've got like a, a songs that we all agree, like yeah, there's that's the festival set. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at me? Anybody <laughs> agree? <laughs> Everybody agree. <laughs> so, as a podcast, we're ambassadors for the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. Are you aware of Sophie and the story? Yeah. Yes. You are. So, we, as we're here this weekend, like a big alternative family here at 2000 Trees, we're just trying to find out, have you guys ever been treated differently or had stereotypes put upon you just because of the music you listen to or the way you dress because you're part of this community is this something you've had to experience in your lives yeah i i, I have i have a little bit um so but you know the things like uh well i grew, grew up in venezuela right uh but i had really good friends you know so yeah um uh, it, it's sometimes if somebody will say something to me we'll go like yeah. in my head, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it was years later, I was like, "Oh, that, that was a dick move." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but I had but I had I had really really good good friends surrounding me, very good family as well. Like my parents are uh, rockers, like so I I, I think I was yeah, very protected. But I remember, you know, like being told like a couple of nasty things. I got friends uh, from uh, another city. They are an amazing band in in the U.S. now, Venezuelan band. They're they're living in Florida now. Um, and the stories that will tell me as well, like in, insane, like on the street, you know, just because it, I mean, they were supporting like Bring Me The Horizon in 2010 and Venezuela, things like that. It's just, you know, anything that was different and people would be like, I don't know, they would call me, they would call me the walking stain because I was all in black, things like that, you know, uh, because I have black hair and things like that. And it does, it does a lot of like... Uh, I feel like sometimes people, uh, with some friends, uh, li literally just talked about this with a friend in Germany, saying that um, uh, like uh, mental health like support, if you are like covering tattoos, if you know, especially like uh, for uh, like female presenting people, uh, like she was saying to me, um, I need help, and uh, and and, and uh, like everybody, you know. But you know, if you look a certain way, then people are gonna be like. No, I'm not gonna help you, you know, and things like that. And it's uh, some some things that you know we we are very distant from, from most people in general, and we just kind of like have our own little circle of uh, you know where everybody is completely accepted for who they are, and there's absolutely zero judgment. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm extending myself a bit too much. <laughs> yeah, not, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Yeah, that, that was that like sense. Uh, yeah. That, conversations that we had you say in, in school as well yeah yeah I mean I think yeah we all I think we all experienced it like you know as I don't know musician artists you're kind of like you're interested in different things than a lot of kids like at the time and you know it's it takes a while to find your people so obviously you experience like you know weird looks and comments and whatnot yeah I don't think me personally I've I've never felt like anything from anyone based on what I'm wearing but definitely my music tastes like I felt like people like like friends actually like especially um, friends <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah, that, that, yeah fri friends yeah, friends, yeah. Friends, yeah. Um, like not not like making fun of the music taste but like it's like an air of disapprovement Dis disapproval is the right word disapprovement is not a word <laughs> sorry it is today we've added it to the dictionary there you yeah, go yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like yeah, nothing ever from dress sense um, on my on my end. Um, I mean, the I, I, did, I did I did get so okay. Sometimes our English gets a, like uh, I forget to English. <laughs> uh, it's funny because yeah, uh, we we talk so many languages, but you know, yeah, the same. I feel like it's experiencing just being different uh, anywhere that you are. You know, us being foreigners, like I'm. I'm coming from South America uh, from South America to like Europe it's really 
uh, opened a little bit in terms of like looks, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, it's more accepted, you know, like uh, especially with the music taste that that, that will go through. But there's all the forms where you feel a bit more excluded. Um, I, just, I, I feel like it's funny. I, I buried all those years of like teen, yeah, yeah. you know, and then uh, and I, I just love being able to think like, wow, now we're here in 2003 and uh, everybody's the most welcoming person, um, you know, that that we we've, we've ever really met, and then even you know that you find the family uh, 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 heart in it <laughs> I'm getting emotional <laughs> <laughs> no yeah you're absolutely right though. that's why places like this are so important because like you said you can walk up to someone you've never met here and you just get along everyone's just like I'm here to watch music let's go watch music together and it's amazing but looking back on the world from like when we were growing up and then what happened with Sophie fast forward to today to 2024 it's a very different world do you think it's now a safer, easier world for people in this alternative community to get along and be safe in or is there still work to be done, do you reckon? Well, I mean, I guess you're doing it, you know, it's like what the foundation is doing and everything that's, it, yeah, it helps, obviously. Yeah. It's hard. The worst the wor- the wor- the wor- is changed for, for sure. Uh, I just think like it's still, there's still, there's more like intricate like things to solve that are very complex like uh, but something that I've always uh, thought is that I feel like treating people empathically like uh, you said uh, William with empathy and uh, and really I feel like you will always especially like if, if you're an artist and in, uh, in the rock metal community you you know always gonna be there for whoever asks you know like for like uh, help like you're never gonna like turn your eyes away like uh, well that's my one of my favorite films like under the skin you know like we are humans and we're not gonna turn an eye if you see someone that needs uh, you know on the street or uh, whatever somebody asks uh, like oh you see something happening I feel like not nowadays uh, where in a, in a, uh, maybe in a evolving society where, where people are more conscious about, yeah. uh, you know, I'm not in a world full of NPCs and I'm the protagonist. We're all people living, uh, you know, uh, this life, wonderful world with so many shitty people. So kind of like, I, I feel that shitty people get called out way more. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and that is a huge step. But, uh, but it's... It's still kind of like a work in progress. Absolutely, yeah. I think I mean that's so important what you're saying there. It is it is that fact that we need to call it out. You see people being just co- acting completely unacceptably. Call it out. Have that. Yeah, stick up for people. Have that empathy, like you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah, completely it's, agree. It's it's a, it's a kind of like I feel like a, a lot of of things dehumanize people this humanize experiences and, and and stories and i feel like we're all humans that have had so much going in all of our lives that you you can't ever judge anybody from uh, what do you think your perception is of them so i i, ju- I just feel that uh yeah now, nowadays especially in the rock and metal community uh everybody is way more uh, if, if you're in trouble, we'll be there, uh, like helping you out. If if there's if there's a problem, it, we're there, we're there for you, for whoever you know, like needs it. And that's that's how I feel at sh- at shows. Uh, whenever, even both sides of the stage, like be, being on stage and off the stage, if some, if I see, you know, if you see something happening, uh, but anywhere, like in the in the street of, you know, uh, uh, when whatever immediately you know like uh, i i well i'm a south american right so i'm very now i'm not very loud because i gotta sing but i i, I yell <laughs> and, I, and i and i and honestly so got a li- little a little story but I go one of our dear friends she was having uh, some issues at, at a festival and uh, i i started yelling and i'm like i don't care if people think i'm an exaggerated dramatic person but it's way better to gain the attention that be like oh no people are gonna think I don't care if people think I'm crazy like if I see if I'm wrong great best case scenario 
but if something you know like happens uh, any any you know like you fainted uh, uh, is, is someone is doing something to you getting roped or whatever uh, you know I, I, I think I think nobody if, if people should not be afraid of looking like oh, I'm gonna do disorder I'm, I'm gonna um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna create a, a chaos around and people are gonna be like oh look 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 yeah. no like do it like uh, you see somebody fainting stop stop the show like stop you know like you see it's uh it's it's, it's important because best case scenario everybody's got like, you did the right thing uh yeah that's no. what i think no, <laughs> absolutely and it's it's beautiful to have that mindset i i applaud it i really do but taking it back to you guys you released your single i'm gonna butcher the pronunciation of this one i know i am uh la corriente no that's perfect well, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, ah, but happy days you released that at the end of june how's that been received by the fans yeah, really well actually, and uh, you know, because it's fully, fully in Spanish, yeah. and uh, people have been here for it. Absolutely, like online, loads of comments, like you know, oh, I don't know what it says, but it's amazing, and just, <laughs> just, just put the the translation on the video so people can understand. I feel like everything is there for people to connect to it, no matter what language they speak. And, and I feel like uh, uh, something that may maybe be lacking in um, in the music community. Uh, here like uh, in, in English speaking countries is the welcoming of languages uh, because I, even though I love English I love it it's such a beautiful language the there's so many amazing languages in alternative music yes. and the more of them I mean uh, I I mean I sing the one my mother tongue but I know so many bands that speak in in and uh, like I know so many of from all over the world and uh, the the language is not a barrier and uh, we learned I learned English around 15 years old and I didn't know anybody uh, what, what the lyrics were saying of the bands that I loved I didn't it didn't matter to me because I could understand the feeling and I feel like n knowing like that that should be uh, more uh, welcomed in the UK uh, alternative scene beautiful absolutely beautiful Guys, it's been an absolute honor to sit here and chat to you. It's been absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for taking the time out today. And absolutely you. smashed that Good stage. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Cheers, much, guys. Yeah. Oh, 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 thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. So uh, thank you. Much. I'm Lorna. And I'm Daniel from Skinny Lister. My name is William Harker. I'm a roaring player. Alright, we've been very excited to have you on, so thank you so much for joining us today. Massively appreciate it. How's your personal Saturdays treating you? Um, <laughs> Been in a van? Yeah. yeah we <laughs> took a wrong turn. Oh, no way. We, uh, we, we've not had a look at the festival yet because we just walked on to say about 20 minutes ago. So, yeah, this oh, wow. is. Uh, I mean, yeah. the beauty of Artist Liaison and Press being together is it's easy to get to. Yeah, it's gorgeous. But the negative yeah. is we've just got sucked in and which is wonderful to talk to you obviously but of course yeah i'm looking I, forward to seeing some music i can i can understand that okay, it's a bit like fuck you know we've just got here <laughs> give us a moment to actually like breathe that'd be wonderful no, you know no I mean? we're so, happy to talk and we're happy to be busy That's cool. oh, well it's grossly appreciated so obviously you're playing tonight are uh, you looking forward to it 10 p.m yeah. <laughs> let's hope everyone remembers it of course they will why would they not you know, a few beers. Like, like, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Let's hope I remember it. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've been playing this festival for years now. I think this is this number four. It's four. I think time. it's number four. But um, we've never had a late night slot, a 10 p.m. slot. We've normally been in the afternoon or early. Oh, uh, okay. So this is a late one. You've been it's upgraded. Nice. Well, it kind of. It is a different stage as well, so it's sort of a different vibe for us to do, which is nice. You know. Looking yeah, I love it. Last last day of the festival. Yeah, Keep yeah. it fresh. Yeah, yeah. Almost headlining, pretty much. Let's, call it Let's that, yeah. say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Atlanta. <laughs> um, but compared to a skin lister show to a festival set, do you change the set this accordingly? So if like people aren't so familiar with yourself, say you might change it out to put more bangers in for when you're here. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, well, if, if we're at 10 p.m., we'll probably leave some of the more ballady stuff out of it. Probably. It depends. I mean, we'll have a look at what it's like down there. But yeah, we, we, we can tailor it. And we'll have an argument <laughs> for about half an hour before we go on about okay. what's going in. It makes it harder to agree, obviously, because yeah, yeah, yeah. we've got we, how many albums? Six albums now? Yeah, so, yeah. you know, there's a few to choose from. Uh, we were just talking, actually. There was one year where we played uh, Cambridge Folk Festival and Download Festival on the same weekend.
again. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is, that is some, a, a situation where you do tailor your set list. Yeah. The songs you can play at Cambridge Folk Festival that you don't want to be wheeling out uh, down there. So, so, yeah. I think some we'll go in, you know, we'll go in hard tonight. Well, I like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> banger after banger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. <laughs> Dare I say. <laughs> So, as a podcast, we're ambassadors for the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. Are you familiar with Sophie's story and the work of the foundation? Afraid not. No? Basically, in 2007, Sophie was walking through a park with her boyfriend after a night out, and they were attacked by five youths, and Sophie unfortunately lost her life. This all happened simply because they were goths. No other rhyme or reason, they didn't know these people, simply they were walking through the park, and these guys didn't like the way they looked. So... What we're trying to do is basically talk to people at the festival because this is one big alternative family that we've got here, you know. And let's find out if you guys have ever been treated differently or had and a stereotypes placed upon you simply because you're part of this community, part of this alternative community. Is this something you've ever had to experience in your life? Um, you're looking at me. Um, <laughs> not, not massively. I mean, I, no? I feel kind of privileged or something saying that. Um, but I, I can't say that I've uh, had any... You know, I mean that that story is that. terrible, isn't it? It's, it's horrifying. Just absolutely it is, yeah. disgusting. I haven't experienced anything like that. No, that's that's but bloody hell. Good, I'm pleased. Yeah, pleased well, that's, yeah. 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 I was gonna say it's not, it's not a bad thing to have not experienced. No, of course <laughs> yeah. not. Yeah, but it's just like. But on, on the flip side, have you seen it happen? Like people being treated differently in the alternative world just because of the way they're dressed or whatever it may be. A goth used to hitchhike home from my school and I think the bus, our school bus might see them and say, oh, there's the goth. But my mum would regularly pick them up Legend. and bring them, bring them home and I'd be in the car, you know, it's just like, well, they're just not, you know. So I don't know, no. But yes, I guess at school, but that's, you know, yeah. school kids, they're just... Arseholes, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Not the time, but they are. I don't think I've ever had a weekend in my life where I've heard so many people say that children are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> we were all one once, maybe, but you know. Yeah, I think that communities like this are so important and oh, yeah. everybody is welcome and feels welcome and that's an amazing thing. And that's what makes 2000 Trees so special as yes. well. I just think it's a great vibe here and everybody, you know, there's all sorts of people here. But we were just saying driving in, like my dad's in the, in the van because he likes to jump on the stage when we're playing and... <laughs> take his time but you know <laughs> he's a bit on there you know and we're all quite into different music in the band as well and we all just agree firmly 2000 trees special place great 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 festival absolutely I, 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 we've had so many people say that trees is this one place where everyone just gets along like everyone, everyone's just here for a good time like supporting all the bands like even bands people have never heard of they're just like oh there's a band on let's go it's, yeah. like, it, it's absolutely amazing to see but obviously what happened to Sophie was back in 2007 do you think like now in 2024 where it's a very different world it, it's probably easier to be yourself and to actually find a place in the world I'd like to think so but I wouldn't be surprised if the, I, th- I still think there's a long way to go yeah um, but I think it's a much more accepted place and I think perhaps the younger generation are even more accepting and you know it's not so different to them as perhaps it was to me and, and you no I agree absolutely bringing it back to yourselves though start of the month you released your EP Pub Bootleg Live how's that been received by the fans well it's not out yet it is is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it shit. Is. Lord, I get the program. Cut that! <laughs> Cut that! I'm in childcare this week. <laughs> You're not getting <laughs> by If it's not supposed to be out, you might have talked to Spotify because I've released it. <laughs> it came out earlier, uh, bastards. What's it sound like? I don't know. Have you listened to it? <laughs> um, it came out, let me think, last Friday. I think. Uh, of course it did, yes. Um, so it's been out a week. It's been out a week, kind of day. Uh, but yeah, no, it's good. It's, it's a it's six songs taken from our latest full album, uh, Shanty Punk. It's six live versions of, of the tracks recorded in a pub shed, quite crudely, but we, we kind of captured the spirit of, a, of nice. that pub. I mean, when I, when I say pub shed, it, as well, it is a pub shed. It's, if you've got 15, 20 people in there, you've got a rammed pub. But it's got all the, you know, everything 
you want from a pub is in there. It's just very miniature, you know. That's it, amazing. It's an amazing spirit in there. In there. Oh, it's a great night out. Also, who's John Kanakanaka? Well, that's a traditional shanty, so that, that's, okay. that's not written by the band. There's a few. When, when we first started, we used to do a bunch of these traditional shanties, and that's one that kind of stuck because it just became a crowd favourite. It's fucking great. Oh, like, cheers. Yeah, I absolutely <laughs> love it. As soon as I heard it, I was like, this is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can't take oh, credit for it. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's, you know, your several. I was going to say, you can take credit <laughs> for your version. <laughs> it's all about the interpretation. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it, and the reason we still play it now, and we've been playing, it, singing it rather because there's no instruments on it other than no. a, uh, some yeah, stomping uh, is because it goes down really well with the crowd and um, the participation yeah, is amazing you know, so, yeah yeah I grew up with my dad singing it in pubs you know oh, so okay. it's like it's, it's in there it's just in there it's part of us and I imagine tonight on the forest stage that wooden stage <laughs> all that stomping is going to sound absolutely incredible <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Guys, thank you so much for taking the time out to join us. It thank means the you. absolute thank world. You really very much. Thank you so much. Yeah, we'll go over the top. Thank there you. we go. We'll do it. Can't wait. Cheers. G'day, I'm Mick. I'm Carrot. And I'm Danny. And, and we're June Raz. We are the best band ever. Of course, absolutely. It's an absolute honour and a pleasure to fucking have you here. So thank you Good very to much. Be here, mate. Thank you. That's all. So, how was your personal Saturday been? It, personal, personal Saturday, yeah. Look. You weren't right. <laughs> Better than my public Saturday. Yeah, okay. good. <laughs> no one ever needs a public Saturday. Nah, normally, no one. His public Saturday is normally picking rubbish off the side of the road for, as a you know. <laughs> as a that's why. We, that's our actual job. We, but we get employed here, so we come over here to do that job. And we tour on the side. Mick, one of Mick's first festivals he snuck into trying to pretend to back in a water truck. And then, <laughs> and then the festival wasn't open yet, so he kept picking up rubbish until it opened. Super! Because it was a three day excellent. festival, so I had to find a different way to yeah, see yeah, it yeah. every day. And one of them, I just saw a truck going into the music. I was like, keep going! Keep going! I was like, keep going! I opened it, and I'm like, fuck! It's not open yet, so no, no, no. but there's all these cleaners picking up rubbish. So I just started oh, picking up rubbish for like two hours until that's it the opened. greatest story I've ever heard. I reckon is a ticket worth a ticket, isn't it? I mean, yeah, I'm playing on the main yeah. stage of that festival. They should let you fucking year, play so for that. Like, yeah, get your VIP, okay. fucking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. started at the bottom. Now we yeah, started, <laughs> yeah. it literally started by sneaking in and picking up rubbish, and then we were on the main stage at like at five thirty sun sunset set like last year at it. So it's like our biggest show. Yeah, it was like thirty thousand tons. They just booked us. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's why they that's why they booked us is because. They saw me picking up the rabbit yeah, and saying, oh, we'll chuck them on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll give them a chance. Yeah, yeah. Give me yeah. 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 I like the initiative of this, uh, this young man, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Unreal. How was, uh, how was your set today, guys, on the main stage? Yeah, it was great. We're used to playing and not many people, so it was good that there were people there. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, was really, it was really good. The was, uh, crowd was sick. There's this like group of uh, kids that have come around the UK... And that they first came to us at 2000 Trees like four years ago. Yeah. And they're called the Pizza Gang. So they wear all these pizzas, same matching pizza shirts, inflatable pizza shit. And their friendship group bond over our band. So And they followed us around the UK and they were here today in the front row. Like, yeah, about 20 or 30 of them. And then they all dip in and dip out when they can. But like last year in Europe, we did a bunch of shows like maybe 30 odd shows and I think they made about 8 of the shows around no Europe. Like, way they would just appear these fucking <laughs> they give us like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so was, yeah, the show was good because they were there and rolling and everyone up it was great got the best compliment we've ever had come off stage like these chicks come up they're like oh, maybe they're in a band or whatever like you guys were so shit I <laughs> said you guys were so shit so it was awesome yeah, it's it's like how are you how? 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 <laughs> yeah. It's like it takes years to get this shit. Yeah. <laughs> but you keep going and do yeah. dreams become you know, recovery. Right people, you can be this shit. Yeah. <laughs> you have a bit of luck oh. and a lot of effort. Yeah. You can be this shit. Zero talent. A lot. Zero talent. <laughs> a lot of effort <laughs> and a bit of luck. Yeah. 
fan. fucking phenomenal. You got a pizza gang following you around. Absolutely phenomenal. I mean, you <laughs> It's a good pizza though. Yeah, I oh, no, 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 they just wear shirt they pizza dress, shirt. You no, know, are they? Is it dresses on on some margarita like just like a cheese right there? It's just like a party shirt. I think it's just a couple of salami on there. Oh, just a couple. They have an inflatable piece of pizza in our crowds having on it today. It's like a pool toy. There's a pizza, but you know where all the little like holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking superb. Unreal. I mean. The set wise, do you change the setup according to where you are? So, like, if it's a sh- doom rat show, you'll play um, wherever the Odin comes from festivals, you play all the bangers just to bring yeah, more people if in. If it's a festival like this, it's like a don't bore us, get to the chorus type. Oh, yeah, set. nice. See, we, but we do have to play, like, if we just played the bangers, it would be a three minute set. So, we've got to fill it out What's somehow. Up? Yeah. 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 It's something that you didn't want again. <laughs> Yeah, we pretty much just do covers and then the one banger yeah, and then we yeah. fuck off. Yeah. Fuck, I just ate this brownie that had chili in it and like, in the sickest way, I feel like I'm having an MDMA cap. Yeah. I'm on a bar, eh? Yeah. Like, I'm um, getting good. smashed by it. <laughs> oh, God. You guys are releasing If It Sucks, Turn It Up. Yeah. How excited are you for this album to come out? Yeah, I mean, if you couldn't say 7 out of 10, and if it had to be 6 or 8... I'd lean towards eight on a good day. I would, I would lean towards eight as well. No, we're eleven out of ten. Eleven, yeah, we we're eleven out of ten. It's it's gonna no, be great. It's, it's good. It's kind of one of those ones where, like, you know, you don't ever want writing albums to die out. You don't want al- album writing to be. And I hate to take this interview into somewhere where it actually um, is talking about music, <laughs> um, but uh, it's what like, we're all here for. yeah. But, <laughs> But, yeah, but it's like, you know, like you, you, we are a band that has been around for 10 years now, plus. 13, yeah, 14, 14, 14. And so we start as He's a trying band. to be younger because right, it's a yeah. podcast. I know. <laughs> the chin. Um, and, um, yeah, and so we are used to writing albums. And, we don't, and so, you know, it's our fifth album, is it? Yeah, and we had a bunch of EPs too, so, so we were... But this we're, kind of like just still want to write al- albums. Like we don't want to do the, just write a million singles for Spotify and download yeah, and all that sort of shit. Yeah. So this album is like a hundred percent full of Spotify singles. Yeah. Listen <laughs> now on Spotify <laughs> and TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I can only They're all just songs for TikTok, pretty much. <laughs> we write yeah, songs for TikTok yeah. in the next album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're <laughs> eight minute, nine minute bangers. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you're talking about people throwing around pizza, but you're playing somewhere called the Big Pineapple Fest soon. So that kind of fucking fucks that up, doesn't we're it? Actually, you got a DJing. You what? We're DJing. We're DJing. We're DJing. Yeah. On the main stage, like similar thing to this, like same kind of festival. Someone told us that if you DJ, you don't have to lug any gear. You don't have to sing. Oh. You don't have to do anything. So yeah. We, uh, you lug a USB around, and then. We're gonna do it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, 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 Break the pressure. Don't play my game, I'll test you. And then they give you heaps of cash. It's sick. Do you have to dress as pineapples, or is it the pizza gang going? Are we going to get the pizza gang over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And pay him in pineapples. This is a $50 note. Yeah, our $50 notes are yellow, so we call them pineapples. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not that we've it's seen many of them, but once we do this DJ set, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we mainly see them when you're rolling them into a. Um, I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. No, no, no. I didn't understand what you heard. No, I, I wasn't quite sure. You didn't finish sentence there. Sorry, what you say? I kind of missed it. Yeah. <laughs> I was just having really. Go <laughs> <laughs> <Can we> go <laughs> Oh, oh that. Oh, we better edit that shit. Fuck. Sorry. Sorry. I thought you were going somewhere else. <laughs> You've also got a big Aussie tour coming up in September as well. Yeah, all, uh, yes, September, not yeah, August. Yeah, yeah. yeah, don't turn up in August. No, it's <laughs> in the end of August. Is it the end of August? And or September. We're getting Fiddler from America over and a couple of other bands that we're not naming just yet. And um, We haven't worked out who they are, but we're trying to make That's it fine, That's fine, yeah, <laughs> but I'm just not sure. It's serious that way. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. Serious, wasn't it? Yeah, but they're going to be good. <laughs> But great menus and yeah, we're frothing. It turns out it's the pizza guys that are play. They're opening up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, right. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. I'm really fucking up today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> shit, shit, fuck, stupid shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Guys, this has been fucking unbelievable. Thank you oh, so yeah. much. Thanks for having us. Massively appreciate it. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much. Have a ripper. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Cheers, man. Thank you so much.